Uh, so this is not a Raspberry Pi, but this is an Arduino experience because first of all, it has a microcontroller. Okay. It still has a real-time side of things, but this takes the experience one step forward with GPUs and MPUs and AI at the edge. So, you know, we will coexist and we will always coexist. By the way, if you didn't know, we are giving away one free Arduino Uno cue board for a lucky winner. Click the link in the description for a chance to enter the giveaway. So when I think of the Arduino, I think of the Uno and the Mega. I think of the simplicity to use a single line of code, giving me direct and real-time control over hardware. It's the undisputed champion for reading sensors, flashing lights, and spinning motors. But in today's world, our projects may need a real operating system, proper networking, and just plainly more computational power for something like machine vision. And it's in these situations that you put your Arduino board back in the drawer and reach for a single board computer. It's always been a choice. The real-time brawn of a microcontroller or the complex brains of a microprocessor. Well, that entire paradigm just got shattered. In a landmark announcement, Arduino have announced that Qualcomm has acquired them. But this isn't just a corporate takeover. This is a fusion of Qualcomm's industry-leading silicon and the world's most accessible development ecosystem. The first of this new collaboration is here. The Arduino Uno Q. This is the first board from Arduino that combines CPU, MCU, and GPU in one compact package. Arduino, together with Qualcomm, have crammed a high-performance application processor and a real-time microcontroller into the same beloved form factor, a Swiss army knife for developers who are ready to move from blinking LED to building real-world AI systems. At the beating heart of the board is a Qualcomm Dragonwing QRB2210 processor featuring a quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 clocked to 2 GHz. At stock, it runs a full Debian Linux environment. Paired with the CPU is the Adreno 702 GPU clocked to 845 MHz, dual DSPs and dual ISPs supporting up to two 13 megapixel cameras for sophisticated AI-powered sight. For your classic deterministic low latency tasks, the Uno Q features a dedicated ST microelectronics STM32U585 ARM Cortex-M33 clocked at 160 MHz. The CPU and the MCU aren't just sharing in a PCB. They communicate via a dedicated remote procedure call library, allowing your high-level Linux applications to command real-time hardware with simple, direct function calls in software. No longer will you need to flash your own SD card to get started. The board comes in two options. 2GB of LP DDR4 RAM and 16GB of onboard eMMC storage, or 4GB of RAM and 32GB of storage, available at $44 and $59 respectively. Connectivity is built in with dual band Wi Fi 5 and Bluetooth 5.1, and it also retains the 8x13 RGB LED matrix seen on the Uno R4. Of course, you still have the standard Uno header layout operating at 3.3 volts. How does Arduino? plan to maintain its community-led open source ethos. Qualcomm typically not known for its open source support. How are you, Arduino, going to integrate this uh, Qualcomm chip? Are you going to have all the documentation? Are you going to keep your open source ethos? Tell yeah. us a little bit. Yeah, I, don't know. I think it's a fundamental question. I love you ask that question. Yeah. Because I think um, Arduino will continue its mission independently. We will pretty much be known as Arduino or Qualcomm company. And we'll okay. be independently doing open silicon, open source. Okay. We will continue the mission of you know empowering anyone who wants to innovate. Okay. Being on the microcontroller side with all the libraries, documentation, but also on the you know microprocessor and AI side, okay. we're actually launching a new experience called the Arduino App Lab. The whole idea is to keep it really simple to use a no-code, low-code platform. Yeah. So. App Lab will now combine the sketches, which all of you love, the yep. C++ sketches, which is really easy to use C++, with a new concept called Bricks. And Bricks will combine MicroPython, 
as well as C++. So the AI elements on Debian OS and Linux. Okay. So this is really a dual brain architecture where Linux meets microcontrollers. Right. And the App Lab is one single simple to use place which puts it all together. App Lab will allow you to combine traditional Arduino sketches for the MCU as well as more high level programming scripts for the Linux CPU. And this contains containerized AI models into a single application powered by Edge Impulse. Right out of the box, you can deploy solutions for face and object recognition, anomaly detection, keyword spotting, and sound recognition. Thanks to integration with Edge Impulse software, you can also easily train and deploy your own custom models. You can either develop on your PC for a familiar workflow or run App Lab directly on the Uno Q in standalone mode for a true SPC experience. So I hear you ask, hang on a minute, this sounds quite similar to a Raspberry Pi. Hell, a Raspberry Pi even runs off of a fork of Debian on Linux. Why would I choose an Uno Q over a Raspberry Pi? I actually posed this very question to Ganit. Let's see what he said. And so um, I have to ask. Yes. Raspberry Pi, you know about yeah, Raspberry Pi. Yeah. They make single board computers yeah. that also run on Debian, although they've got their own version of Debian, um, that run on a single board. And this sounds very similar to what the Uno Q does. So how do you differentiate yourself? First of all, it's a very, very high respect for Raspberry Pi. We love them. We yeah. are absolutely partners with them. We've done a bunch of Raspberry Pi ports on Arduino. Yeah. This is a very different approach because this takes the Arduino experience to the next level. Okay. Like you say, it has the combination of Linux and microcontroller, which okay. Pi doesn't do. It has a standard Debian OS, not a customized OS. Okay. It has memory on board. So it, this product will come in two variants. 2 gig as well as 16 gig of eMMC on the board. Okay. And then 4 gig and 32. So you will have 32 gigs of memory and 4 gig of flash on the board. So you don't have any separate SD cards and everything else. Yeah. So this takes Arduino to the next level versus really not going after or not, you know, being in the Raspberry Pi space, if you may. And of course, you guys also have on the flip side still the microcontroller on the board. Exactly. Right? So if you want to do embedded hardware, you can still do that. Let's go back to that choice we started with the real-time brawn of a microcontroller or the complex brains of a microprocessor. For years, we've been forced to pick one and accept its limitations or awkwardly wire the two together and hope they play nice. Think about it. How many times have you designed a system around a Raspberry Pi only to bolt on a Pico or another Arduino just to get clean, deterministic I.O. for a stepper motor? I personally have used this exact system before in my own projects. The Uno Q eliminates that problem. The Uno Q can function like an SPC, such as a Raspberry Pi, but you retain the ability to have precise real time control over hardware. It is a fully integrated solution to the Pi plus a microcontroller problem that we've all been building for years. This is a fundamental shift in what a development board can be. It shortens the path from prototype to production. Imagine developing a smart camera, your Python application on Debian uses a TensorFlow light model accelerated by the Adreno GPU to detect a problem on a conveyor belt. The moment it detects a defect, it makes a single digital write call to the SM32 core, which then triggers a gate with microsecond precision. No USB to serial latency, no OS scheduler jitter, just one cohesive platform. Exciting times lay ahead for Arduino. Thank you.